Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Uh, today it's going to be Shadow of the Beast, a Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive conversion of the Commodore Amiga game of the same name. Now this version actually differs quite a bit from the uh, the, the computer original, uh, but it's still fun, and it's uh, one I like going back to quite frequently on the Genesis. The Sega Genesis version of this game is infamous for not being properly optimized, uh, so when it was brought over here from PAL regions, uh, it just wasn't optimized and it runs way too fast. So it runs probably about 15% faster than it's supposed to. The gameplay and the music and all that is faster. Uh, it doesn't mean it's unplayable. It just means it's a lot harder than the original version that, uh, you know, well, the original territory this version came from. So uh, this is actually the version I sort of grew up playing. I didn't play any of the computer versions. I didn't play any of the other console versions. I played this version of the game. So as far as the difficulty is concerned, it's not too much trouble for me. Um, so hopefully we should be able to get through this playthrough uh, without too much issue. Now, I, again, I did a Let's Play of this several years ago. Uh, I've since gotten much better video hardware. And so we're going to go ahead and do another run of it. I don't think I'm quite as on point now as I was when I did that first Let's Play, so you might want to still check out that first Let's Play. Um, but for those of you guys that are here and watching already, if you don't feel like checking that out, just keep watching and uh, kick back, relax, and enjoy this playthrough. This will probably be a 20 or 30 minute long playthrough. Uh, it's not a horribly long game when you know what you're doing. Uh, the length from this, the length of this game really comes from the trial and error. Uh, approach that's required. So this game is very, very difficult. Uh, you will require, uh, you will be required to memorize things. You will be required to know exactly where to go at all times. Otherwise, you'll die. There are no continues in this. So every time you die, you go back to the very beginning of the game. Now you do get 12 hit points, so you have a lot of chances, but. It's very easy to take damage in this, especially since enemies and whatnot move so quickly, so... But yeah, before we jump into the game, as usual, we're gonna go ahead and do the old Patreon shoutouts. So they're gonna flash by the screen. Thank you guys for supporting my channel directly via Patreon. And if anyone's interested in supporting my show via Patreon, links are in the description box below. Uh, likewise with the recent live stream Super Chatters, they just flashed by as well. Thank you guys for your direct patronage on my weekly live streams. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the game. And you hit the start button, you're basically thrown right in. And you can either go left or right. You want to go left when you start out this game. And uh, you'll quickly realize how fast enemies will come in and leave the screen. And so we've got boulders here and we need to punch them. Uh, your main form of attack is the punch. You can also jump and kick like so. You can also duck and punch. Um, but we're not going to really be do doing ducking and punching just yet. And these enemies are flying in crazy fast. Uh, so it, it takes a long time to get used to this version of the game, honestly, due to uh, how fast the enemies come out. And what happens is the, the more you play this game, uh, the more you start to remember, you know, the size of the screen and where enemies are triggered and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and, and skip this uh, story sequence here. I actually really like the atmosphere this version of the game provides. Uh, it's very dreary, and when you enter new environments, uh, there's always a little bit of a uh, sort of a, not really a cutscene, but an intermission sequence that has some text that describes the, uh, the feeling of the situation and stuff like that. It's pretty cool, actually. So what we're going to do is come down this ladder here. So this, this whole, you know, underground tree area, you can go multiple ways. If you fall off that ledge, you'll die, so you don't want to fall off that ledge. Again, this is a trial and error thing. When I first played this game way back in the day, I fell off every ledge. I died in every way possible. And that is what happens with Shadow of the Beast. So we're going to eventually come back up these ladders and go left to get ourselves a power up, which will allow us to take care of a, a mini boss we're going to have to fight in this area. Uh, so we're going to jump over here, grab this key. Now you have to actually jump pretty early. I find that the platforms in this game will let you fall off pretty, pretty early. You can also punch this guy right there. Uh, fortunately, the hitboxes in this game are actually kind of large. I mean, that's a double-edged sword. But in a lot of cases, you can actually end up killing enemies before they even touch you. Uh, like with that, that green snake thing that was jumping around, um, I ended up destroying it even though my fist didn't actually touch it. So that's something to keep in mind in this game when you're playing. And I took an unfortunate hit there, wasn't really trying. Sometimes you can actually duck and hit this orb, but other times it doesn't really work. I don't know, really know why that happens. So a lot of times you need to stand and attack that orb, but attacking that orb and destroying it 
gives you a projectile that'll allow you to kill this uh, upcoming boss here. And it's uh, some really cool graphical effects there. The Genesis was really good with graphic effects like that. And companies, developers like Cygnosis were really awesome um, implementing graphical effects like that. They were really uh, masters of their craft in that regard. Maybe not masters of awesome game design. Uh, a lot of Cygnosis games were extremely difficult back in the day. Um, and a lot of European developed games were extremely difficult back in the day as well. Uh, Shadow of the Beast is an example of, you know, difficult games, but uh, it's probably one of the more manageable Cygnosis games, honestly. Uh, if you haven't played many Cygnosis games, uh, they have a tendency of being very, very challenging, and this is probably on the easier end of, you know, their games, of, of the games I've played by them. So we're gonna go ahead and come up this ladder. We're gonna come up this ladder too, and we're gonna work our way over here to the left. I believe we get ourselves a key here, or something like that. And there's gonna be a red set of uh, dragon bats, whatever you want to call them, that fly towards you. And we're just gonna wait, and then wait, just like that. And so, Shadow of the Beast, like, a lot of European developed games, actually, um, is very rhythmic in terms of, you know, its patterns and whatnot. So it's just, you wait, move, wait, move, wait, move, wait, move, turn around, nope, wait, move, turn around, bam, just like that. Wait, move, wait, move, move, wait, wait. Just like that. See, it's very rhythmic in terms of how, you know, you move through uh, obstacles and whatnot. And that's uh, full strength, also known as a health pickup. And so now that we've done that, we're going to come down here and move over to the left. And we're going to flip this switch here after we kill some guys. You do get points in this game, and there is a high score board. But unfortunately, just like a lot of uh, console games from back in the day, scores are not saved. So, the scoring system doesn't really have much application in this game. You don't get extra lives, you don't get any extra hit points for scoring well. It's just there. It just is. It's not really, you know, all that useful. And so what we're going to do here is just come all the way down this ladder, work our way to the left. Uh, this part can be a little tricky to get through without taking damage. There are a lot of parts in this game where I, I pretty much will take damage uh, no matter what. And this is one of those sections where I usually take damage, pretty much no matter what. And I didn't take damage. It's like, right as I said that. <laughs> maybe maybe I need to talk to myself more often and, and, and say how terrible of a player I am and then just magically work my way through things without taking hits. So this part's a little tricky. You need to go bam, 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 just like that. Timing is actually pretty strict on your punches. Um, so that takes a little while to get used to as well when you're playing this game. But again, that just sort of like, uh, you know, drives home the whole rhythmic aspect of the game. I had to do it on time, go bam, 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 one, two, three, four, five, that sort of thing. Um, so that is how you need to play this game. And unfortunately, I stopped in the wrong spot there, so we ended up taking, taking damage. But it's okay, you yeah, know, we can take a bunch of damage on this level, and we're gonna end up getting our health back. That was actually a lot of- I think I took like three hits from that little guy there. That was actually really pathetic because that's a really easy enemy to take out. Uh, but once we get out of this area, we're gonna get a bunch of health back. Um, one of the first things that happens once we're back out in the green field is we have the opportunity to get six hit points back. So, you can replenish some health. You get no extra lives or continues in this game, but you can replenish your health, which is nice. And knowing where those health pickups is very good. We're just gonna go ahead and sit here, wait for these things to deplete. And then we're gonna have some uh, spikes in the ground that raise up. And then we have uh, another mini boss here. We basically got this power fist. And what we're gonna do is just hit this guy. We're gonna go ahead and just tank and take a single hit, just like so. So we took a hit, but we're gonna get our life back. You know, we're gonna get six hit points back. We only need five, so we're gonna be at max health. So I took a bunch of hits there. It was sloppy but it doesn't really matter that much. So, you emerge from the darkness into sunlight. Again. A little bit slow. However, it is late in the afternoon, or late in the day, and the shadows are growing longer. Yeah, I really like the text in this game, actually. It's really cool. It really sets the, the tone for the game. It sets the mood. I'm gonna go ahead and try to punch that guy. Punch this guy. And I'm gonna have to try to focus here, because again, these enemies come out so fast. When you're talking and playing at the same time, it's actually very difficult to to see them and react to them quickly. So we'll just kind of see what happens here. One, two, three, four, five, just like that. 
very rhythmic, like I said. One, two, three, four, five. And you gotta watch out for these things in the ground. Then we're gonna just sort of take our time. Oops, I was I was looking at my microphone for some reason, not not the game screen. <laughs> and I took a hit, unfortunately. Not a not a big deal. Uh, so the the final you know, I'd say the last third of the game is actually the most difficult, by a long shot. Um, but I found a trick out the other day, I don't remember doing this in my previous Let's Play. Maybe I did, and I just don't remember. Um, but I have a way of tackling the, the final castle area, uh, and coming out of that whole area with a little more health than you normally probably are supposed to. So we don't need those right there, because we have 12 hit points, which is the maximum. And one, two, three, four, five. And watch out for these things in the ground. And these eyeballs just basically appear, then disappear. And they always appear and disappear in the exact same spot. So very patternistic, very rhythmic, depending on how you approach it. Patternistic is, is, is the better way to put things at, at, at certain points of the game. Rhythmic, well, patternistic is always the, the, the right application here, but um, some patterns that are applied in this game are also very rhythmic in design as well when you when you have to attack them and make them go away. Others are just patternistic and that's it because there is no attacking them. There are a lot of obstacles in this game that can't be destroyed, like these hands. They go up and they go down, then you cross. They go up and then down and then you cross. Uh, so very patternistic. So this part is a little tricky. You can try to jump kick these guys. Uh, the hitboxes are a little weird in these guys with the, with the clubs and whatnot. Ooh, I ended up actually hitting both those guys at once, but then I took another hit from the other guy. Um, but we're actually nearing the end of this long stretch. This is the longest stretch in the game. And uh, that's actually one of the very first roadblocks when when I was first playing this game. Aside from trying to figure out the tree, uh, that first long field was a major roadblock. And there we go, we've got the torch. If we keep going over to the right, we'll run into a wall and we'll basically be stuck and we won't be able to go anywhere. So we have to go into this castle. And so what we're gonna do is go left first, like so. And this part is actually really tricky. I'm gonna be jump kicking a lot of guys here. So we're gonna jump over this, like so, and then jump kick everything that comes our way. So jump kick, jump kick. And we have to watch out because we can actually get hit by that guy up top. But I find that we end up taking less hits if we just jump kick our way through that. And we can actually punch this guy right there like that. The timing's actually really tight on that little snake thing. And we're gonna get all of our health back right here. So we grab full strength. And we're gonna need to duck like this to get past that. And we're just gonna wait. And we can actually take our time here. We can try to inch the screen over very slowly. That's actually a good strategy in a lot of parts of this game. And just let this guy jump, like so. Jump kick him. I always take a hit here. I have no idea how to get through that without taking damage. And this guy can be a little tricky to get through as well. You just want to time this just right, otherwise you will take a hit. And we're going to sit right here, wait for this uh, sort of blob to bounce back over this way. Bam, and attack it like so. And I'm going to just take my time on this part. So there's a little chest guy firing out arrows like so. We're going to go ahead and destroy him. And we're just going to inch the screen over very slowly and take a hit still, because I mistimed my attack. Bam, there we go. And we're going to wait like this. So one, two, three. I'm going to wait for these guys to come back again. So just take your time on this part. One. Oops, missed it again. It's okay, as long as we can get through this section without taking too much, uh, you know, without taking too many hits, we can exit the castle, come back in, and then the, the health potions reappear. Which is quite fortunate. Uh, enemies do reappear, so we basically re-triggered those axes. Fortunately, I think the axes are a little bit easier to deal from, uh, deal with when they're coming from behind. There's gonna be a couple snakes here as well. There's one. Looks like just one, actually, not a couple. Alright, so this is a, you know, a nice little gauntlet right here. Constant fire coming your way, always from the right. There we go. And you have two choices. You can go left or right. Left is just a dead end, so you just want to go right, just like so. And this part is also really difficult to get through without taking a hit. So... And we took a hit. I always seem to have to take a hit here, unfortunately. And we've got five hit points. Uh, let's hopefully... Hopefully we can get through this without taking too many hits. Let's turn around. 
and four. There we go. Okay, good stuff. We need to go to the left here. Hopefully we can do this without taking many hits. Fast barrels. These barrels are crazy fast. I don't even know what's launching them. Like, where are these barrels coming from? <laughs> Magically appearing barrels. So now we have a gun, and we're actually- we've got the gun permanently for the rest of this castle. Uh, it never runs out of ammo, so you don't have to worry about that. And we're gonna just taper our shots here, just like so, to get a head start on those guys. Basically, four of those bugs on the bottom- Basically, two levels of bugs fly your way. You only need to worry about the ones that are on the same level as you, so basically the bottom set. And so now we- we go up and we go right, but I only have four hit points. Uh, so I don't want to risk this. I am going to die if I- if I progress. I am- I'm going to die, pretty much. It's guaranteed. So what we're gonna do is come back outside, and what's funny is you're not meant to have the gun out here. So when you try to attack, your character starts glitching out. It's actually kind of funny. Uh, what I'd like to do is see if I can go all the way back to the tree and see if the gun will start firing inside the tree. I don't think it does, but it's something I've wanted to try. So we're gonna go right back into the castle. And we're gonna take this exact same path. So this adds extra time to the playthrough, but it's gonna ensure that we have a lot of health to get through the last portions of the game. Uh, so I highly recommend doing this. But the thing is, we have a gun now, this is a lot easier. So I just taper my shots like this. One, two, three, four, like so. And we can just shoot this guy. And now, survival is pretty much guaranteed for the, you know, through the next uh, handful of sections, because we've got Max life now, but same as before, duck. And now that we can taper our shots with the gun, we can pretty much kill enemies right as they appear. And unfortunately, I took three hits. That's actually not good. Um, we'll see how we do. We'll see how we do on the rest and see if we need... You know, if you want to, you can come back and do this a third time. There's no limit. You have no time limit in this game. No time limit at all. There we go. So as long as we can get down here without taking any more damage, I think we'll actually be good with nine hit points. And we don't have to go to the left now, we can just go straight to the right. And we're gonna have to turn around here to shoot this guy. A couple of guys in the ceiling throwing down axes at a 45 degree angle. Hitboxes are a little weird on these, so you need to be very careful around these axes. And we took another hit. I think we'll be fine, so we're gonna go ahead and just progress instead of doing that all over again to try to maximize our hit points. So again, we're gonna need to taper our shots here and then start mashing really quickly. Just like that, because of those, those, I guess, missiles that are coming across the screen. Alright, so this is another mini-boss here. This is actually quite tricky. Uh, the big thing, big thing you need to worry about is this bottom projectile. So we're gonna go ahead and just, sort of just stand here in place, like so. And we need to push the screen forward... ...to hit his weak spot. But notice that the rate of fire on these, uh, these dragon heads is different for each head. And we need to push the screen over as we fire. Otherwise, we won't actually hit the boss. There we go. Oops, took another hit. See, this is actually kind of bad. We only got three hit points. So, just take your time here. There we go. He's almost dead. He only- he doesn't take that many hits. Probably one more. This is probably the last- no, nope, not the last one. Let's just wait. He's taking a lot of hits, actually. There he is, he's dead. Okay, this is gonna be really tricky. We really need to get to our, our health refills here, otherwise we're not going to survive this. So let's turn around and kill that guy. And it's good to just try to taper your shots a little bit as you scroll the screen over. That's one hit.
Okay, there we go. That's a set of hit points right there. Bam, there's one. We've got four hit points. And there should be another one right here. So we're up to six. That's good. And we'll get another four hit points uh, near the end of this. So we're going to go ahead and just try to kill everything we can. And again, I always like to taper my shots. And this is really tricky here. We're just going to, going to go ahead and take a bunch of hits here, unfortunately. Not a great way of doing it, but I really don't have any other way of doing that. It's really rough. And we took another hit. All right, some more hit points right here. So we're back up to six. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if you can basically just count it, you'll know exactly when to start moving. And memorization is, is completely required on this stage. If you don't have this memorized, you will take hits like I was taking. And this boss is a little tricky. You have to get up the top, you know, get on the top side to hit him. You could probably hit him on the bottom side. But look, I took a hit. But I didn't even touch him. The hitboxes are, are very, very weird at specific parts in this game. We're going to go ahead and just take our time here. I'm not going to rush this. Okay, so we're pretty much after this right at the end of the game. This is the final stretch. And we do have room to get some more health back on the final stretch. There we go. And we ended up not hitting him. You have to hit him dead center, otherwise it just, it just won't connect. Um, and it won't do any damage. So here we go, lots of really, really fast enemies once more. So again, you can try to just inch the screen over, bit by bit, like this. So this is tricky. Uh, these parts right here, you don't want to hit these middle gravestones. The health that is there will actually deplete your health. Uh, it's very, very trollish stage design. We've got six hit points. And we just need to take it relatively safe here. There's two more. And we're gonna go ahead and just jump over that take a hit. Very trollish stage design. You try to jump over it and another enemy appears. You can't do anything about it. So we're just gonna keep taking our time here. Just look at how fast these guys come out. This is why this version of the game, for a lot of players, is not very well regarded. Uh, the game is a lot more difficult than it probably needs to be as a result of everything moving so fast. Again, I have a soft spot for it because this is... I was trained on this version of Shadow of the Beast, so it doesn't bother me that much. But, I will admit, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say it was a little stressful. Uh, it is absolutely a little stressful because you only get one chance. You know, despite all the extra hit points you get over the course of the playthrough, you only get one chance as you play through this. And here we go! This is our final boss! So, he basically smashes down this, uh... This mallet? This club, and you just need to hit him in his toe. You need to you need to stub his big toe, and then he apparently falls. Uh, but you really don't want to touch that uh, that mallet, and that's it. We just beat Shadow of the Beast on the Sega Genesis again, and yet another Let's Play on my channel. So uh, this is all you get on the ending screen. Uh, it should be noted that there is actually a Japanese version of the game, which is probably the ideal way to play the game. There's some extra graphical effects. A lot of the sprites have been reworked, uh, and you actually get more of an ending screen than you do in this one. Uh, and I believe the speed has had actually been optimized as well, I think. So I don't think it runs as fast. So uh, if you got a flash card or something like that, or you mess around with emulation, uh, and you don't like the difficulty of this one, definitely play the Japanese version of the game. But when I when I wanted to re-record this game for another Let's Play. I, I wanted to do the US version again because it is the hardest version of the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive game. So, uh, but yeah, so things can get very stressful. I mean, I was actually worried I was gonna have to redo this whole Let's Play because 
uh, I ended up getting very, very close to dying in both the castle and the uh, the shoot 'em up section, when you know, with the jetpack. So I was actually stressed out, stressed out myself. So uh, you know, it, it, for those of you guys that have never played this before, it's probably easy to see how stressful this game can get, uh, and why it's not a game for everybody. But I. Uh, this is one of those games where when I was playing it and I was learning it many, many years ago, there was like, uh, there was this strange sort of addictive quality to it, where I'd make a little bit of extra progress every time I played the game, until I was getting closer and closer to the end, and I could, I could taste the end. And even though the castle was very, very difficult, I had this, this urge to persevere, and I would keep making progress, and then I eventually did it. I, I finished the game, and I, I beat the game, and uh, it felt very satisfying, and then I just kept playing it, and I got better and better at it, and it was satisfying for me. So if you're that kind of player that's into things like that, where you make slow progress uh, as you as you try to work your way through a game like this via memorization and trial and error, uh, it's a fun game. It's solid. And what's good about even this version of the game is that it's still got a very moody soundtrack, uh, very moody atmosphere, very uh, foreboding, which is very cool. Not many uh, games from the 8 and 16-bit era were able to convey that feeling, and Shadow of the Beast is one of the few from consoles back then that was able to actually do that. Uh, so if you play this by yourself in a dark environment with headphones on and it's just you, it you it feels kind of eerie actually you know you feel isolated and it's uh not many games are able to convey that and this game did so but yeah that is shadow of the beast on the sega genesis if you guys have any questions or comments as usual post them down below uh also i will try to come back and do the japanese version sometime in the future i know i've had requests to do that uh but now that i'm doing let's plays only every other two weeks i'm not pumping out let's plays as often uh, and I don't want to do too much duplicate content, so it might be a while before we do that version, but I would like to do it in the future. Maybe we'll do it on a live stream, uh, like a Sega Genesis variety live stream or something like that. Or maybe we'll we'll do like a Psygnosis variety stream of Psygnosis titles in the Sega Genesis. There are a bunch of them. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Shadow of the Beast, Flink, um, God, Fatal Rewind is another... Uh, I guess Pugsy? Or was Pugsy Sega City only? I thought there was a, uh, a Genesis version of that as well. I don't know. There's Lemmings. That would actually be- that's actually a fun stream idea, then I think about it. Doing just a Psygnosis Sega Genesis stream. Uh, that could be pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think of that, if you want to see something like that. That would, that would- that would be fun. Despite how hard their games are. Um, but yeah, that's it guys. If you guys are brand new to my channel, consider subscribing. I've got a lot of Let's Plays here. If you like this format, I've got many more Let's Plays to come and many on my channel already you can check out. Uh, for those of you guys already saw, thanks for your usual support. If you guys like the video, give it a big thumbs up. Or if you, you know, hate yourself, give it a big thumbs down. And, uh, you know, that's it. So thanks for watching guys. Until the next one, take it easy.